Hello, my name is Roger Wombold, and I'm Senior Product Trainer with Quill Corporation. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the tools and features that can be indispensable when working on designs that are destined for garment decoration. With the introduction of the Smooth tool in Corel Draw X7, it allowed the user to easily remove nodes from objects with a simple brush type of stroke. This will effectively remove nodes that could possibly affect the way in which the shape is filled with a tatami or a satin stitch. In my toolbox, I'm going to select my shape tool and then I'll select this object. You'll notice that there's a number of nodes around the perimeter. Actually, there's 128 nodes. In the toolbox, underneath the shape tool, I have a smooth tool. I'm going to use the smooth tool to do a simple stroke around the perimeter of this object. And now when I go back and I select my shape tool, you'll notice that I've reduced this down to a mere five nodes. The next tool I want to talk about is the knife tool. In CorelDRAW X8, the Enhanced Knife tool now allows the user to not only cut single objects, but groups of objects as well. Furthermore, the user can now easily create gaps or overlaps with great precision. I'll show you how this works. I'm going to start by selecting my design. Underneath the Crop tool on the left-hand side is where we're going to find the Knife tool. Now, on the Interactive Property bar, I have the ability to do a straight cut. I can do a multi-lines or freehand cut. There's a number of other features here as well. I'm going to select a straight cut. In the drop-down, you'll notice that I have the ability to set no gap or overlap. I can dictate a gap as well as an overlap. In this particular scenario, I want to create a bit of an overlap as I'm going to be doing a split front. I can set the size or the amount of overlap. I'm going to set this to 0.25 inches. And it's simply a matter of left clicking and dragging. If I hold my control key down, I can constrain this line. I'll let the mouse button go. I'm going to select my pick tool. I'll mark you select the right half of the design. I'm going to drag this straight down, holding the control key down. And this way you can easily see that I've actually created an overlap. Creating design elements has become even easier with the ability to copy a curved selection. Let me show you how this works. By selecting a part of my design, I'll grab my shape tool. Holding the Alt key down gives me the ability to draw an irregular shaped marquee. I'm going to draw a marquee around this portion of the design. I'll release the mouse button, do a Control C on the keyboard or copy, and then I'm going to do a Control V. And very easy, I'm going to tap the space bar. You can see that I've actually created this object. I'm going to grab my shape tool. I'll just zoom in on this a little bit. Select these two nodes and I can do an auto close on those nodes. So very quick and very easy, I've been able to take a portion of a design and repurpose it. The next feature that I want to share with you is the new Corel Font Manager. The Corel Font Manager allows you to create watched folders that contain fonts, and these fonts can be installed as or when they are required. The Corel Font Manager also allows you to create collections of fonts for specific workflows, such as embroidery, engraving, or sign making, which can save hours of time when you're trying to look for that specific font. And finally, there's font filtering. Filtering allows you to quickly drill down to various types of fonts or styles that you might be looking for. One other thing to note is that I can use a font whether it's installed into my system or not. You'll note down at the bottom that I have almost 6,000 fonts on this system. In CorelDRAW, I can actually select my text tool. In the drop-down, I have the ability to go into filtering and select fonts that are not installed on this system and thereby make use of those. The next feature that I want to show is an extension called Pointalyzer. Now to access the extensions, I'm going to click on my Get More icon at the top. And that's going to open up a docker on the right hand side of my screen. Under the Extensions tab, you'll notice that we have a number of extensions that are available. Now Pointalyzer is an extension that you'll need to purchase. To access Pointalyzer, under the Effects menu, select Pointalyzer, and this will open up a docker on the right hand side. For me to apply the effect, I'll select the element that I want to apply it to. 
you'll notice I have some different settings in here such as density, scale, screen angle, and that sort of thing. I'm simply going to click on apply. Very quick and very easy, you can see it's applied this pattern to this object. Let me just go back out to my page. You also have the ability to apply a custom shape to be used as your pattern. I'm going to select my piece of text. In my shape drop down, I'm going to select custom. I'll click on the select button and then I'll click on this shape. Now it's simply a matter of clicking on apply. So very quick and very easy, you can create a stunning effect with your text. The final tools that I want to show can work quite well with each other. They are Photo Zoom and Power Trace. Photo Zoom is an application that will allow you to upsample a raster image larger than 20%, where you would typically start to see the loss of detail. Ensure that Photo Zoom is installed by going to Windows, Dockers, and then down to Get More. In the Get More Docker, we'll scroll down and you want to make sure that you see Benvista Photo Zoom Pro 4 and you want to see that it's been installed. It'll simply say downloaded. To make use of it, I'm going to select my bitmap image and as you can see it's a very low quality image. I'll select Edit Bitmap and this is going to bring us into Photo Paint. I'm going to zoom into my image a little bit more and now from the File menu down to Export 4 and I'm going to select Photo Zoom Pro 4. As this particular object is floating, I'm going to merge this with the background. I'll be prompted for newer versions. I'm going to select No. Now, if you have not yet registered the application, it's simply a matter of inserting an email address in the dialog box that will appear. Send that off and in a matter of moments you'll get the registration key back. All I need to do here is I'm going to change the size by percentage. And I'm going to bump this up to about 200%. I also have the ability of typing a value in here. That's all there is to it. I'm going to click on Save. I'll save this to my desktop. I'm going to leave it as Untitled TIFF and I'll simply click on Save and click OK. I'm going to close off Photo Paint. And I'm going to go on and I'm now going to import that image. And I'll drop it down onto my page. You'll notice it's quite a bit cleaner than the original image. With this selected, I'm going to select Trace Bitmap and I'm going to select Outline Trace. Now for the bulk of embroidery and that sort of thing, I find that clip art gives me the best results. So I'm simply going to select that. I'll maximize my screen. And here we have our raster image and our vector image. You'll notice that my background has removed, and that's because I have this selected. I also have the ability to remove background from entire image. When I select that, you'll notice that I've also lost the belt and this area over here. So let me deselect that, and I'll show you how we can resolve that. I'm going to specify the color that I want to remove. I'll hold my Shift key down, grab my eyedropper tool, and I'll simply click on the area that has the color that I want to remove. So I can remove all the white this way and that will lead me with my object and still have me maintain the white in the belt and the axe handle. Now you'll notice if I go to the color tab I have a number of different colors over here. To make it easier for embroidery of course I want to reduce my number of colors so I'm going to select these two colors here holding the control key down and I'll merge that. If I want to I also have the ability to edit the color. Let me go ahead and merge the gray objects as well. And so we now have it brought down to eight colors. I'm happy with that. Of course, you can reduce it further if you wish. Simply a matter of clicking OK. And that will bring you back into Corel Draw with your vector object intact. I can now take this and use this as a left chest or make it much larger if I do vinyl cutting, for example, maybe for the floor of the uh, school gymnasium. That brings us to the end of this tutorial on the essential tools in CorelDRAW X8 for garment decoration. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and you're looking for additional resources, head on over to the Discovery Center at learn.corel.com.
You'll also find a number of regularly scheduled training events, Corel customer forums, as well as my book entitled Bring It Home with Corel Draw, a guide to in-house graphic design, and the essentials of Corel Draw X8 from lynda.com. Thanks for watching.